Hi guys, what's going on today? I hope you guys are having an awesome day today. I'm coming on today because this is a requested video that I share some information to you guys about the earthquake uh, that the state of California had a few days ago. I don't know if any of you are aware of it. Some of you may know and some of you may not. But if you guys are interested and you want to see the things that I'm going to be talking about, some very serious, important information, then keep on watching. Okay, we're going to first start off with, um, on the 4th of July, California was struck with a, first they said it was 7.1 earthquake. Then they reduced it down to, I think it was 6.7 and it went back up to 7.1. So... I guess they can't get their facts, <laughs> you know, straight. But yes, we had a terrible, terrible earthquake. Oh, man. It's like, I don't even know where to begin. I'm just going to try to just give you guys information, tell you my experience, um, share with you supplies and things that we need. What do we do when there's an earthquake? So let me just go ahead and get started. Uh, yeah, when the quake hit, let me see what time was it. Um, now I'm getting a mental block as to the time of the day that it was, but that's not important. The fact that it hit, it was scary. Earthquakes are deadly. They can be deadly and they are deadly and they are scary as you know what. Um, my experience... And the way I responded, you know, I didn't respond too well with the earthquake when it shook. Um, I'm still trying to think what time was it. It was during the day. I know that. It was daylight. Um, I panicked. And I should not have... Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was in my office where I'm at right now. But I was sitting at my desk um, editing a video. And all of a sudden... I started to feel the, the shake and rumbling and it's very, very strong. And I'm like looking around, you know, like this. And then I got up and I immediately went to my son's room because he has never felt it. Now he's a teenager, so, you know, he wasn't really scared, but I'm trying to tell him, Aaron, get up and come with me, you know? And he's just sitting there looking, you know, kind of like in an amazement, you know, out of shock, but he was amazed because he's never experienced it before. And he's smiling, and I'm like, boy, you better get out of that room. What is wrong with you before I come in there and snatch you? You know, it, it kind of upset me, I guess, because I was worked up. Earthquakes, they can work you up, okay? Let me tell you, it can make you nervous. I kept saying, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and I, I screamed a few times. You know, I'm not trying to make this funny, you guys. This is very serious, but my reaction, you know, later when we thought about it and we talked about it, it's funny. So I'm not making light of anything. It's just that sometimes I can be a little comical and don't even mean to or don't even realize it. So this is a very serious matter. So if I make it sound funny, I'm not trying to, not in the least. But just my reaction was kind of funny, you know. And my husband was trying to, uh, he was trying to, he was remaining calm. And um, I'm standing in the doorway because it, 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 the shake wasn't so much where you had to get under a desk or anything to cover up. That's what we're supposed to do. But it wasn't that kind. And I, for some reason, I felt safer just holding on in, in the doorway, just with my hands on the side of the door of the the door frame. I felt safe there. But anyway, it was very scary, very scary, shook, shook, shook. And then even after the initial shake, it kept shaking. And some people would even feel dizzy. I know my son, my husband said they felt dizzy. Um, I didn't. I just felt extremely nervous and um, anxiety levels up to the roof okay I just you know it was really hard to calm down it was really hard to relax I'm like oh lord help us Jesus yeah you know, I just whoo you know I just had to really brace myself and I had to get myself together because you know here I am reacting around my son uh, 
but he understood. I think it was the next day we had another one and we've been having multiple aftershocks. The one that got up to 7.1 again, I think that was the next day, but it was at night. I believe it was around 8, almost 8.30 p.m. And oh my gosh, I'm sitting on the couch and it started to rumble and because I can sense it faster than anybody else in this household. I mean, I'm very sensitive to that feeling. If you sit extremely still and calm, you'll feel it. Even after the shaking, um, it continued to shake and shake for about minutes at a time. And I mean, my son could feel it shaking continuously, but my husband, he's I don't feel anything else. I'm like, yeah, it's shaking. I feel it and I'm not imagining it. I know my body and I'm experienced with these earthquakes. I know. It's not that I'm experienced with it, I should say. I'm just extra sensitive to it, the feeling, than he is. Anyway, um, then my son comes into the living with us and, oh yeah, I was panicking again. Like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you know, just, oh my Lord. And I was talking on the phone with my mother at the time, right when it hit. And I just seemed to lost, lose control. And she's trying to calm me down, Liz, calm down, breathe, you know, what, <laughs> whatever it is I had to do. And my husband, he kind of like took my arms and, and lead, led me, I should say. He said, go get under the table, <laughs> under our kitchen table. Well, I went in there and I sat in a chair and, you know, like bracing myself like at the edge because it, it, it wasn't necessary to, to really get up under the table. Um, I didn't do it. You know, I just like observing, making sure any, I'm not under anything that can come down on our, on our heads or anything like that. So I'm just like sitting there like about to ready to take off, you know. Now, where was I going to go? I don't know. That was just my mind talking. But, ooh, I tell you guys, it is... It's nerve-wracking. makes you really scared and nervous. Um, at least it does me. I can't stand earthquakes. I can't stand... We have no warning, guys. There are literally no warnings. Uh, we've been warned so many years ago that the big quake is coming. And we've had many, many earthquakes. Some major, some very, very minor but in a lot of different areas, a lot of different cities, um, it depends on where the fault is, the earthquake fault, where they're centered. If you're in those areas, then you're going to be hit the hardest. And there was one particular city that was really damaged. Oh, just some people lost their homes and <sighs> wow. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, some people lost their homes. We saw people sleeping on their mattress outside on their grass. You know, that's sad. That really is sad. Um, and then we felt another one at four in the morning. Oh, Lord. I'm like, I said, oh, my gosh. You know, I, I, I always react like that. Oh, my gosh. You know, and it wasn't strong enough to like get out the bed and get up under the bed you know we just kind of laid there and observed it and it stopped and it was hard for me to go back to sleep I thought to myself you know what even the night before I'm thinking you know what I'm just gonna stay up all night so I can just be on alert you know and my husband says no you can't do that you got to go to sleep you know so I said okay I'm going to sleep but it better not happen but anyway, uh, let me t give you guys some information um, because since this is a requested video, uh, some of you may be wondering, you know, what does it feel like, uh, which I've pretty much uh, explained a little bit of that, but I'm going to go a little bit more deeper. Um, one question, what does an earthquake feel like? At any time. Serious injuries, but still patient. Right. Nerves are still rattled, but the recovery effort is getting. 
I mentioned a little bit of it, but it feels very uncomfortable. It, very, it feels very uneasy. You're constantly shaking, and that can throw off your equilibrium. It can make you dizzy. It's just a lot of shaking. Depending on how strong it is, you can be thrown and tossed. I mean, we saw a video on the news where cars were parked outside and they were literally, and I'm not exaggerating, moving like this. You see the ground shake. Oh my gosh. Just watching that, it just, it just makes you feel so, ooh, just uncomfortable and just kind of like a terrible feeling. Just imagine someone walks up to you and they, and they forcefully shake you like this. If you can understand that analogy, that's pretty much how an earthquake feels. And depending on how strong it is, or well, depending on how strong you feel of that motion, the, the shaking. Oh boy, it's, it's, it's weird. I, I must say earthquakes are very strange. Uh, sometimes, and we have seen where the road has split. We saw that on the news in this one particular city. Oh my gosh. And I don't like to see things like that because it's, oh, it just kind of makes you, you can't live in fear, but you kind of feel like, I don't think I want to drive anywhere. I don't want to go outside. It can kind of make you, make your mind mess up a little bit. But the next thing, what do you do when there's an earthquake? Well, there's a lot of things you can do, but what they recommend now, back in the day, we would stand in the doorway, and that's what I'm so used to. And sometimes you still can do that. I do it sometimes. It depends on how strong it is. But what the American Cross recommends and the seismologist recommends is that you get up under a sturdy desk, any type of um, desk, chair, where there's nothing above your head where it can come down on you, cover yourself cover your head and just try to protect your loved ones as much as possible you know by informing them what to do and embrace whatever you're holding if it's the leg of the table whatever a desk just hold on and ride it out because baby it is nothing you can do until the shaking stops it's pretty much just cover your head and pray if you can you know why it's shaking some of you might want to know what kind of power outage do you have or excuse me I thought I was feeling another shake Lord have mercy I guess I'm whew, talking about this so much I literally thought I was feeling something <laughs> I was about to get nervous but anyway what kind of power outages do you experience or did you have a power outage now in my area in my city uh, to my knowledge, at least we didn't in our home. We never had a power outage. Sometimes there are power outages. Sometimes there's water main breaks. Where water is flowing everywhere, flooding most of the city, certain streets. Um, sometimes there's gas leaks in your home. And they tell you if you don't smell gas, don't turn the gas valve off and there will be power outages and I can't stand when that happens especially at night in the middle of the night you go to turn on your light switch uh-uh there's no power and it's kind of like it's freaky it's just it feels I don't know how to explain it you guys it's just a horrible horrible feeling you don't want to ever experience just like tornadoes and hurricanes I know they are huge and they are bad and blizzards I know all that is bad anything that erupts nature is not good so and some of the residents in that city had to be trans transported to our hospital in our actually in our actual city where I live and I thought wow and it's kind of like an hour hour and a half to two hour drive but you know I guess I don't know their town was badly destroyed or what now what the American Red Cross recommends and they're always talking about it on the news that we need to be prepared get an earthquake kit survival kit if you don't want to go on the American Red Cross and get theirs because they're a little bit pricey and especially you know you need one for every household but you need one for every person that's what they suggest 
So you can always just go to Dollar Tree, go to Walmart and get you a backpack. Now, um, I'm going to be getting some backpacks and I want red. I want the colors to be red. You don't have to spend all that money. You can go and get you a backpack and buy the supplies and just put it in there yourself. So what they recommend is for water, plenty, plenty of water, one gallon per person per day. So that's three gallons per person per day or more. So it's basically a three day supply is recommended for uh, evacuation in case you have to evacuate sometimes there are residents you have to evacuate uh, I just heard on the news this morning that this family house is um, severely destroyed and they have to move out and they had slept on their grass with the um, you saw clothes and and uh, mattresses and oh man that, that was just so sad but you know you have to do it may seem weird to lay out on your lawn, but hey, you wanna survive. You don't care about luxury when it comes to these serious earthquakes. You want to survive, so you do whatever it is that you have to do to survive. We also need non-perishable foods, like easy to open canned goods, the one that have the little top that you pull open. You don't wanna deal with can openers, unless you want to. But I know I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to be dealing with can openers. And I have electric can openers anyway. I don't have those, the other ones. But that's a good idea to pick up one just in case. Because all canned goods are not the easy pop-up tops. Um, You need a first aid kit, like I said. Well, I didn't say that one. You need a first aid kit that has your medications in there for at least a seven-day supply. Um, your family's medications, whatever medication it is, your daily medications, a uh, headache medication, if you take an inhaler like my son do does, EpiPen, you know, for food allergies, he has that. So, you know, I would pack all of that as well. Um, it's recommended that you have a flashlight. Probably a good idea to have more than one and have extra batteries. Um... You want to have a battery powered or hand crank radio. You want to have sanitation and personal hygiene items, toiletries, deodorant, soaps. Well, not soaps, but hey, you can have soap. You can take your water, and if you have to wash your face or wash the surfaces of something, you know, you can do that. Um, you want to have copies of your personal documents. Um, i.e. birth certificates, passports, insurance policies, proof of address, etc., etc., whatever is important to you. Special wedding pictures, if you can, you know, gather that up. You know, certain pictures that you don't want to lose, you want to cherish, you want to, you know, pack that up as well. You want to have your cell phone with charger with you. Uh, you want to have emergency blankets. Now, I keep some emergency blankets in our car, and uh, we do have a first aid kit in the car. And in our garage, we have the, uh, it's like a trash can, you know, big, high, tall trash can. And I have it filled with toiletries and all of, you know, these items that we're supposed to have in case we have to leave and... Just pull it on out of the garage, or if the garage does not work because power outages, then you want to bring it through the house or the side of the house. And being, talking about power outages, if the garage is not open, you know, we can just open it up manually. So, you know, you got it okay for that. And when the, when the quake first hit, um, my son thought about why don't we pull the car out, you know, into the driveway in case we have to leave. So we let him pull it out since he's learning how to drive. And um, I pulled it in the next morning because I just felt like, okay, I think we're safe. I'm just going to pull it on in. So, uh, yeah, you want to do that if you need to. You also want to have family and emergency contact, phone numbers, addresses, you know, have all of that. Because, you know, in in the event of an earthquake, sometimes you forget things. 
you can't think straight, everything's confused, you're terrified, you're scared, and everything else. So you want to do that. And it's good to make a plan, a safety plan. You know, and you talk about this plan and decide where is everybody in your household, not your household, where is everybody else, you know, other people that live in the city or close to you, you know, where are you guys going to meet if there's, if we have to evacuate, you know, we need to have a meeting place. We're going to meet this place and we'll discuss it and talk about if this happens, so-and-so will call so-and-so. Another person will call another person, you know, so have a plan on what's, what are you going to do? And also you need to have some maps in your kit, in your bag as well. There are more things that you can do. These are just the first essential things that, um, I jotted down really quick. Um, yeah, um, that's pretty much it. That's all the information that I have for you. I hope this has been very informative for you. I hope that you have some clear understanding of what we go through here in California uh, with these earthquakes. If you have any questions, you can leave it down in the comment section or you can email me if you like. Uh, my email address is always in my description box on every video and I will see you guys later and thank you again thanks for watching bye